probably on the air. <laughs> yours good to go okay as I was saying we'll call a meeting to order for the Vinton Town Council meeting Tuesday September 21st and we always start with the roll call I I believe I'm gonna do that this okay uh, Councilmember Lyles here Councilmember Mullins here Councilmember Stovall here Vice Mayor McCarty here Mayor Gross here uh, thank you, folks. Uh, let me mention, uh, first of all, uh, we are observing here in our council chambers uh, this evening uh, the social distance. Uh, that's the reason we don't have our mask on. Uh, so just want everyone to know that we are uh, aware of the uh, situation. So we are, that's the reason we're spread out, we're observing the social distance procedure. Uh, we will now have our moment of silence. Uh, we use that here in Vincent so that everyone can uh, pray or contemplate as they see fit. Uh, during this time, uh, if you pray, I hope you will. I certainly plan to. Uh, I would ask that you keep this country, this community, and this council meeting in your thoughts and prayers. While we're standing, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, Council Member Lyles usually takes care of that. You got someone lined up, or are you going to go for it? I was going to do it, but but then a good friend of mine, um, Andrew Tackleberry Carlo, said he would do it today. All right. Can't beat so that. Tackleberry will be doing the <laughs> for us. I think I know who that is. But, uh, so, folks, if you will stand for those two items, please. <laughs> Okay, the next item is uh, <coughs> upcoming community events and announcements. Vice Mayor, are you going to do that one? I will. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, September the 25th, the Veterinary Chamber of Commerce presents the last mingle at the market of the season. Um, it's $5 shake, it's $6 cover charge, a beverage garden, and a food truck, which is Lazy Dog Food Truck, and the gates open at <coughs> 6 p.m. On September the 30th, Tractor Supply will be having a ribbon cutting at 7.45 at a.m. at uh, Lake Drive Shopping Center. October the 2nd, Veterinary Chamber of Commerce presents the Fall Festival. That will be from 10 until 4 in the downtown Benton area. Over 75 plus vendors and local entertainment on the municipal and market stages. Uh, the Farmer's Market, Pickin' and Grinnin', from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., it's a $5 gate admission. Local musicians, um, bluegrass bands, uh, it goes on until 5.30 p.m. Twin Creeks Beverage Garden, fruit and food from our downtown restaurants. You can order at the market from Joe Good Pies, Farmergesa, and Big Bellies. What day is that? Is that October the 2nd as well? Yes, ma'am, same okay. day is the fall festival. Okay. Um, October the 3rd, Thrasher Memorial Methodist presents the Crop Walk for Hunger from 3 to 5. Uh, for more information, you can uh, email Mary Beth Lehman at laymanb at aol.com. On October the 9th, the Farmer's Market uh, Unique 2 pop-up scale is from 10 to 2. Come shop local nail, hair, clothes, craft, etc. That's all I have for upcoming events. Um, I was able to attend the um, Lee Avenue, um, what was it, street party, and uh, that was very well attended. The band was very good. Um, they had a food truck, so it was a really nice event. Um, and also, I was unable today to attend, but I understand that the uh, Senior Expo went fairly well, considering uh, the weather that we're having. Yeah. 
Okay. But we're not going to say anything about the weather because we're going to just praise the Lord for the rain. Absolutely. We need it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Very true. And I just also want to take just a second to say thank you for everybody who recently um, came out and supported Chris and I during a, a hardship that we had in our family. And I just uh, want you to know that it, it meant a lot to us. So we thank you. You bet. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Vice Mayor. Any other announcements? Okay, uh, hearing none, we will move on. The next item is a uh, request to postpone or change. Uh, I'll mention one thing. It's not really, quote, a change in procedure. It's just that uh, I understand that Chief uh, Griffin cannot make it this evening, so we'll delete that item from our uh, agenda for this afternoon. And any other changes or additions? Nope. Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which uh, tonight contains the uh, minutes of the uh, August 17th meeting. And uh, it's hard to believe it's been a while since we've been together. So th that's the only item in our consent agenda. Are there any changes or additions? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. I second. We have a motion by uh, Councilman Stovall, second by Councilmember Mullins. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. All right, moving right along, we'll uh, move to the uh, awards and introductions. Uh, Chief Drummond, please, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council and Town staff. It's an absolute pleasure that I get to uh, capture some awesome awards and recognize some great deeds in the Benton Police Department, and in this case, uh, with town staff. Um, so the first step in to making the world a better place, as you know, is improving the life of others and not so much your own. Be it with the quote, the sweetest satisfaction lies not in climbing your own Everest, but helping others climb theirs. And that's sort of the premise to the things I'm going to read you today is the ambition and the authenticity of some of the town staff that we have here that serve our community. So first up, I'd like to call Detective Sergeant Cummings and Detective Corporal DiCarlo. Thank you for being here, guys. So on July 6, 2021, the Vint Police Department was notified of a missing juvenile in the town of Vinton. Initial reports indicated that a juvenile had left the residence in the town of Vinton the previous night during the evening hours. Members of our agency immediately began a search for the missing juvenile for what would be for the next 72 hours. During the span of three days, both officers beside me and detectives and officers from the Vinton Police Department worked tirelessly for the safe return of the juvenile. Specifically, criminal investigation detectives canvassed and re-canvassed areas, interviewed and followed up on several tips, communicated with family members, and patrolled greenways and the Roanoke River. Additionally, cohesive efforts were made with the United States Marshal Service, United States Park Rangers, the Department of Social Services, Roanoke County Emergency Communications, and social media outreach to the AWARE Foundation. With the aid of Norfolk and Southern Track Supervisor Detective DiCarlo, coordinated a search effort by riding a service vehicle for hours while canvassing the Roanoke Valley by utilizing our railways. Meanwhile, Detective Sergeant Cummings followed up on, a, on leads that resulted in a door-to-door -door effort of checking several downtown Roanoke establishments and interviewing those close to the missing juvenile. Despite hitting inconclusive leads and working long hours, detectives continue to pursue any information and review existing information that can bring new ideas to the search effort. During the span of the search, both detectives sacrificed their personal obligations and committed the service to the safe return of a young community member. Despite many obstacles and challenges, both Detective Sergeant Cummings and Detective Corporal DiCarlo continue to expand their search efforts. It was clear that they would continue with the search until a resolution was concluded. So there is no greater feeling than recognizing two members of the Vinton Police Department who place so much value in human life. As with any law enforcement organization, the premise of our sworn duties is the profound reverence of human life. In our beloved profession, we meet many while in the course of our duties. And as community caretakers, we believe that every life has an opportunity for a bright future. 
It takes great personal daily inspiration and courage to place such high regard in the value of life and exert every effort and will, and will to accomplish a challenging task. In this case, the return of a juvenile who unquestionably has endless opportunities and experiences worth living. Congratulations to Detective Sergeant Cummings and Detective Corporal DiCarlo. So as I previously mentioned, same scenario, and it involved town resources outside of the police department. Uh, we're always thankful when it's a community member or an employee of the police department that comes and things come in fruition and help us. So in this case, I'd like to call Paul Miller up here. So this is on July 9th, 2021. Keep in mind this started July 5th through the 6th nighttime. Uh, on July 9, 2021, the Roanoke County Emergency Communications Center dispatched officers to the Vinton Police Department regarding a missing juvenile reported to be seen in the lobby. It was established that the missing juvenile was the missing person who members of our agency were actively searching for. Prior to law enforcement contact, Paul Miller, an account technician with our finance department, recognized a young individual outside our agency while just walking by and identified him to be our missing person. Vinton officers had been actively searching for for three days. It was determined that the missing juvenile came to our agency after he ran out of food and water and was experiencing fatigue. What is not documented are the events that occurred before our dispatch center notified of his safe return. When Mr. Miller determined who the indi individual was, he quickly assessed the situation and recognized that this was someone who was undoubtedly scared, confused, and exhausted. Paul appropriately notified law enforcement and established a rapport with the juvenile to make him feel less apprehensive about the situation. Paul connected with the young man and briefly spoke about life, opportunities, and family, while also communicating that life is full of challenges and difficult circumstances. While as challenging as they may be, every obstacle can be overcome with time, as we all know. The example Paul showed may be categorized as a small act of kindness, and compassion, but often the smallest deeds are what creates the greatest impact. In Paul's case, he showed authenticity and genuine care for someone. The greatest joys we find in our lives are rarely found in the pursuit of our own success and desires. The pursuit of self-ambition only leaves us searching for a never-ending cycle of wanting more. By design, we have been inherently put in this world to live for something far greater than ourselves. A life well lived is a life of gratitude and service. Paul showed us a noble example of compassion and an example of what truly means to help a fellow person in need. And we wouldn't have known any of this. It would have went under the radar if I didn't just ask a random question of who actually ran into him. Uh, Paul was, did his deed and did it kindly and did it quietly. And then we went searching for information. That means a lot, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you all for giving me the time to recognize a really awesome ending to a three-day non-stop 24-7 search and if it wasn't for Paul we probably would have continued searching so the winds are not always on the police department ends it's a it's an overall community effort in this case Paul he was paying attention he was vigilant he saw the advertisements and of course news and everything and absorbed that information and retained it and called us it was amazing <laughs> All right, Great Chief. Thank you. Chief, thank you a lot. And uh, uh, we certainly want to add our appreciation to uh, what you've said. I mean, what a wonderful example the two police officers have set. And uh, so we certainly appreciate them uh, 
being persistent in their job, doing their job well, and, and actually going above and beyond the call of duty. And of course, we appreciate Paul too. It's wonderful to know that uh, folks on our staff get involved, that, and it's not really their job or anything, but just as a fellow human being. So uh, we appreciate it. Right. Initially, they told me it was Pete. Uh, yeah. Pete ran school. And then you're exactly right I I told him to go take a picture and they didn't get to hear <laughs> that's all right when we get a chance we'll we'll talk to them directly but uh, we certainly do appreciate them and uh, thank you for bringing it to our attention too chief very nice very nice job um, s I understand that uh, Chief Griffin can, uh, cannot be with us tonight. Perhaps he can make it sometime in the future. Since we're under uh, awards and presentations, I would just like to uh, recognize someone that I think is a really good sport. <laughs> and and uh, he stands up to what he says he's going to do. And my <laughs> good friend, the town manager, uh, lost a bet, as you may be able to tell. <laughs> I think he looks good in old gold and blue myself. <laughs> yeah, Pete, we, you, you got to stand up for That's this, man. You got <laughs> it. One time. One time. Here we are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it off now, brother. <laughs> I thought he was going to have a heart attack before we got that off. <laughs> uh, yeah, we made a little wager, and obviously he lost. By the way, I've decided to quit betting, so. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time to quit, right? <laughs> going to end on a good end. note. Uh, it, it, was, it was as it should be. It was fun. You know, it was fun. Uh, too terrible. Too <laughs> too <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, it's fun for some of us. First down, and you can't score. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, sorry. I should. I, <laughs> it was fun for some anyway, of us. We got you. <laughs> of course, Lori sent me a video of people preparing couches, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> All right. I guess we better move on. Uh, citizen comments and petitions. Uh, anyone have anything? I don't. I think we're all, uh, all the usual crowd here tonight. So we will <laughs> move on to our public hearing, uh, which tonight the public hearing is uh, to consider a lease of some property to. I don't know how you pronounce that, Vindals. Uh, so I will officially open the public hearing and we'll ask for our town manager to present a report from the staff. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Doing double duty here. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Gross, uh, members of the council. Um, do have before you this evening um, a uh, consideration to reauthorize a lease agreement with uh, the McAdoos, um, otherwise known as Vendos LLC. Um, it's hard to believe it's been uh, five years since yeah. um, <laughs> since this project um, we, we leased the space. Uh, this is the, the the back parking lot that was associated originally with the library. Uh, when that space was a library and so we leased that to McAdoo's for their patroning and employee parking um, and, it's, and it's been five years so uh, what we have before you this evening is a is a updated lease agreement um, this is actually for uh, an initial 10 month period which will get us to June 30th the end of the fiscal year and then there'll be opportunity for four additional one-year renewals the reason why we do the 10 month initially is to get it on again the, the fiscal year cycle so that it matches all of our other leased property to um, to businesses and individuals that we have in the town and it keeps it more consistent for us so we don't lose track of them uh, moving along fairly minimal changes to the lease agreement we we modified a couple little minor items to include some liability insurance uh, 
and, and maybe a, a few little nuances of um, you know more or less the uh, uh, the legal coverage that we needed but uh, otherwise it's essentially the same lease that we have with our other um, um, uh, partners in the community and um, so it would be staff's recommendation that we do uh, authorize uh, uh, a new lease agreement with uh, the Vinton McAdoo's okay thank you thank you sir for that report uh, anyone here to make any public comment concerning this no comment from the attorney okay good <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign right uh, council you have any uh, questions or comments at this point on this item no, I just noticed it's always got cars in it, so yeah. not just being used. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Right, that lot stays full, and and uh, it, despite the addition of several other uh, restaurants in town, that lot still stays full up mm -hmm. there. So that's right. All right. If there are no other comments, then we will officially close the public hearing, and uh, as noted in the agenda, we will take action on this officially on uh, October 5th at that council meeting. Speaking of town attorney, uh, Jeremy, I don't see anything listed, but always good to see you. All right, great, great. Good looking tie. <laughs> And with right, that, uh, no problem. No for the problem. third time, right? <laughs> <laughs> My fault. I'll take responsibility for that. <laughs> Attorney and the chief ought to wear a tie anyhow, right? They, they look official. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, with that, we will move on to the town manager section. If you would, please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gross, once again. I have several items requiring action this evening. Um, some of these are, are a little um, delayed just because we had a council meeting in early September that we uh, um, didn't have significant business to conduct that evening. So um, some of these have been maybe a little bit of time since you've last heard. Um, the first item actually um, was back in the spring. This is uh, a resolution um, for an MOU between uh, the local government jurisdictions of the city of Roanoke, the town of Benton, uh, Roanoke and Botetourt counties, and the World Triathlon Corporation, and the Roanoke Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau. This is for the Ironman competition. Mm -hmm. And um, back on June 6th of this year, we had um, the Ironman after a year of being postponed due to COVID. Um, it was the intentions of uh, the Ironman um, organizers to host this event in Roanoke for three consecutive years. Um, so the MOU, we just wanted to get through the first year, kind of make sure everything went well before we made any tweaks and commitments for the next year. So um, the event went well. It went off without a hitch. Uh, we have made a few minor modifications. Um, the MOU is essentially the same as that you authorized in the spring. Uh, the major change is we had some language uh, notations in there about our preferred route being the Blue Ridge Parkway. And if that is not available due to the National Park Service, then then it would be uh, another route mutually uh, mutually agreed upon of the, of the local governments. Um, pretty much, and this again, this is for a, a two year con continuation of the event. So this will be for 2022 and 2023. Um, so it's again other than that it's pretty much the same understanding they will compensate us for our overtime expenses of law enforcement and traffic closure um, they provide all of the infrastructure um, as far as the barricades and the cones and uh, we pro provide personnel essentially and uh, you know professional guidance you know in the sense of the nuances of the town and where we need to close roads and that sort of thing but the, you know the first year is the toughest and we've got through that and we've made some minor tweaks and we've had a number of internal meetings a number of meetings with uh, our man um, organizers and we'll continue to meet through this next year uh, in preparation of 2022 but essentially it went well and we'd like to continue it okay thank you very much uh, and you're right that uh, it seems as though things went well it's incredibly popular event so that's uh, very exciting to see that they're going to uh, renew the event. <coughs> so, Council, you have before you uh, res a, uh, yes, a resolution uh, that re would n uh, renew the uh, MOU as described by our uh, town manager. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Okay. I'll second. <coughs> All right. We have a motion by Council Member Marlins and a second by Vice Mayor McCarty. Uh, Cody, I guess, are you calling the roll? Pete? I can do it. 
Council Member Lyles? Yes. <laughs> Council Member Mullins? Yes. Council Member Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Council, I apologize. I didn't give you a chance to make any comments. If, <laughs> if you have any comments or questions. I was going to ask, you know, or I guess I'm sure they're in talks with the Park Service, but did we see any? Like, it went off pretty good with the Park Service, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, so. it did. Um, they did change superintendents of the Blue Ridge Parkway. So there's another leadership, and, and we were just in, recently introduced to her, and I understand the conversations are ongoing. So there's a process, um, right. you know, for the permitting. And uh, I don't know that they can extend it beyond one year at a time. So I think it's just the okay. formality of going through it. But okay. all indications are it went well, and that was pretty groundbreaking. Um, mm -hmm. I as understand it, no uh, permit had ever been issued for the parkway uh, to fully close it for an event. Now, there had been issued permits to actually simultaneously do events while the parkway was open, but never to, to formally close it. So it was pretty groundbreaking. Yeah. Wow, very awesome. Well, again, I apologize. I went through that so quickly. I'm new at this, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ann going to the next one? <laughs> um, yeah, un unfortunately Ann was a little ill this evening, so I'm going to try to pitch it and do this one as well. Um, on August 17th, uh, Ann did brief council uh, as well as the finance committee uh, previously uh, regarding the need for a formal um, grant policy and procedures document. Um, you know, this is a pretty standard thing uh, as it's moving forward, as all these uh, federal funding is, is coming forth. and. Um, our auditor recommended that we have a formal policy. All indications are our staff do an excellent job of documenting and reporting and, and managing grants, but to have the formal document in place is looks like it's going to be a requirement in the future, and we want to be proactive to try to get this in place uh, as we move forward, particularly, again, with all the grant funding that we have. Um, uh, again, Ann went into, you know, pretty specific detail. I'll hit a few of the highlights. Um, it basically just requires that all the department heads um, or, or staff who are, are managing or app applying for grants uh, document that to the finance department um, so that we have a little bit of a clearinghouse that the, that the finance department is aware for accounting purposes, uh, but also as backup for some of the, um, the grant documents. Um, they will maintain the central grant file on behalf of the department heads. Um, <clears throat> it just provides for the policy and procedure how it flows through um, and um, and it, it ensures that we're um, following the procurement regulations for federal state and our local own local procurement policies um, and then finance there are some examples in there of some of the best practices uh, on following this for the department heads to follow um, and then obviously there is opportunity for department heads to reach out to the finance department um, if should they need help or guidance uh, on how to manage a, p a particular aspect of a grant, but uh, the grants are becoming more complicated. Um, they're becoming, you know, they're very important for us. They're absolutely critical for us to function and do things in the town. And this is just a formal kind of document to um, lay out the procedures and policies for our staff to follow in the, f in the, in the future. Right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Council, you have any questions, comments? <coughs> nope. Uh, I, I just uh, briefly will say that, uh, and as uh, Pete mentioned, this is uh, kind of a standard item or getting to be a standard item, but I want to tell you folks, and you, you guys saw the document, uh, it took a lot of work to it put that together. It really did. A lot of people involved. Uh, probably Jerry, uh, Jeremy's office was involved. And well, she said he read it. You read it cover to cover is what she said. Mm -hmm. um, and remember the finance meeting? She said that one of the things really helped her was yeah. was that, you know, he, he read it cover to cover. So that's, yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right, Mike. We discussed it in finance. And we did, sir. It's a yes, sir. very uh, uh, thorough document, and I think one that's uh, going to be very valuable. So I'm, I'm glad that the staff uh, took care of it in this manner. Uh, so, Council, you do have a resolution before you that would approve the uh, grant policies. I'll so move it, Mr. Okay. Mayor. A second. All right. We have a motion by Councilman Stovall, second by Councilman Lyles. Please call the roll. Uh, Councilmember Lyles. Yes. Councilmember Mullins. Yes. Councilmember Stovall. Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty. Yes. Mayor Gross. Yes. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, the next item uh, I will uh, ask uh, Ms. Anita McMillan, our Planning and Zoning Director, to present. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the Town Council, um, I do have um, just to, a brief summary. Finance Committee were informed regarding the need of the right of way and temporary construction instrument for Walnut Avenue project and also on uh, August the 9th and August 17, Town Council will also a brief regarding the issue. This is for the project for the bicycle and pedestrian accommodation from Walnut on Walnut Avenue from Fifth Street, the town west limit. As mentioned previously, the grant funding does not cover the right of way portion for this project because of the scope from pedestrian risk and change into the uh, pedestrian and bicycle accommodation. And um, the project uh, needs the right of way from uh, two property owners. Uh, Neelam Corporation and Viking Fence Company, and also a license agreement with Norfolk Southern uh, for the pedestrian trail on the Norfolk Southern property. And um, the total amount of the uh, right of way and temporary construction instrument is about $40,232. <coughs> and staff would like uh, to thank. Mr. Peters, the time manager for assisting me in acquiring this uh, right away. We work with the property owners. They were informed since 2019 we, with COVID and things like that. We met several times in 2020 and we have few meetings and we went back and forth. So finally they did agree um, after using Norfolk Southern, Norfolk Southern right away real estate agent uh, figure that we negotiated too with Norfolk Southern. Um, having said that, I also like to thank Pathfinder for Greenway for the for their donation in order to help the town to fund for this right away and the temporary construction construction easement. I do have before you the revised resolution and thank you so much to Jeremy uh, for, uh, for assisting me putting together the, the uh, document and also um, later on on the license agreement. So I do have before you the revised resolution of us, uh, accepting the, right, the needed right away and the temporary construction easement as mentioned and the three two property owners, three properties for the project. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you. Council, questions, comments? I just think this is like, we've been talking about this for a, quite a while yes. and um, it's finally taken off and it's really gonna enhance, like there's our other gateway into the town mm -hmm. and it should really help like not that they need any help but it would enhance the businesses as well with all the foot traffic now that's going to be going down through there so yes. it's a it's a win-win for everybody yeah Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the only change to the resolution was minor it was just some clarification of the language to make it clear that we were acquiring easements for the cost of our okay just, just okay mm -hmm. right so our motion uh, should be uh, to approve the updated version of that okay yeah um you you mentioned the uh pathfinders we certainly want to thank them for yes. their help uh uh not just uh moral support but they stepped up financially and uh, we so we uh definitely want to thank them for all their help and uh, you know the greenways is like so many things here in town and actually in the valley that uh, certainly takes partners uh, to get things done and, and a team and uh, they're, they're, the Pathfinders are an important part of that team. So we want to express our appreciation to them. Um, Susan's not here, but if we haven't already, perhaps we could uh, uh, have some kind of formal letter of appreciation sent to those folks. If you don't mind. Yes, and, uh, uh, this, this is like everything else, and uh, Keith, you, you touched on it too. Uh, sometimes we have these things come up in a meeting and just bam, it just passed right on through. Well, a lot of work is going on for, like you said, a long time. So, uh, so it's it's important, and and that does take a lot of work to get these things to this point. Which the point is, uh, we have a resolution before you, Council, uh, that would in fact. Uh, approve uh, the uh, documents and the procedures uh, for the Walnut Avenue uh, project and 
and of course the uh, the monies I guess to uh, purchase the properties and it would be the updated version I think everyone got this at their desk so uh, council is there a motion I'll make a motion to adopt the updated resolution okay I'll second so we have a motion by council member Lyles a second by vice mayor McCarty please call the roll council member Lyles yes council member Mullins yes council member Stovall yes Vice Mayor McCarty? Yes. yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. When Council Member Mullins sat down, she picked the resolution up. She says, uh oh, do I have to read this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I said, oh, do I get to read it? If you do, it? we're going to read it together because I got one too. <laughs> yeah, we all got one. Uh, Anita, thank you so much. We appreciate yes. you. Okay. I think she has one more to get yep. on yes. the uh, Norfolk Southern. And before before she presents, I, I do want to thank Anita. Uh, on, this is a lot of work that goes into oh. organizing these. Uh, as we mentioned, grants are difficult. Um, BDOT grants um, can be trying at times. We're very thankful for the funding and the support, but it, but it is very intensive uh, to follow. Um, and your work with, with our consultant um, to, to get it designed. I thank Mr. Pettigo and Mr. Patel for working with us uh, for these easements. Um, they, they, they've been gracious to, to accommodate us, and it will be a great project. Um, this next one is uh, for the railroad. Um, again, that also comes with challenges, so kudos to Anita for uh, being steadfast to make, make it work and get it, to get through to this point. Absolutely. Yeah. I do, yeah. Um, this I do have before you a resolution and also the amount, and then also indicating where the funds coming from for that nine thousand four hundred. It was a, if take took few weeks to negotiate with the right away the agent from thirty thousand to nine thousand four hundred, yeah. and then also um, the she forwarded us the license agreement and we negotiated about the how long termination notice and. I do work also with the town attorney, Mr. Carroll, and I appreciate his um, input and his revision, and also the um, the town underwriter because of the requirement for insurance and things like that. So the revised license agreement has been resubmitted to the rider with agent, and she sent it to the attorney. So as of today, she said no, she hasn't heard back, but we do have a, a draft license agreement. So the resolution is basically requesting counsel t t for the town manager to enter into the agreement with Norfolk Southern. This is basically, if you all see the footpath, the, the dirt, dirt footpath, so with the project, we will have a paved type trail to connect from the city of Roanoke, that catwalk, onto the sidewalk, so. Under, coming under the bridge now, yes. the one, okay, got it, got it, got it, okay. Yeah. Yes. Cool, right. cool. So instead of now, they're just using that dirt path. Mm -hmm. Right. We're trying to formalize that. Right. Mm -hmm. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely so good work. That looks great. Yeah. Be great. Very good, very good. So council, any questions? Any other comments? Um, just a question that's off, well, it's one topic, but off a little bit. But, you know, that's that low water bridge. Okay. Is uh, I heard, is in there talks about redoing that one day or something when this? The city? The the city water bridge there? Yeah. The they were talking about it, but then because of Norfolk Southern overpass there. Yeah. They say it's they being pushed all the way back. Like uh, it's not in the. Yeah, it's not in the current six year plan, but th they do plan to eventually replace it. And when they do, they, they, they can't. Th it's going to always be a low water bridge because of the right. Norfolk yeah. Southern. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything with that yeah. track or anything. Um, but they do plan to eventually, when they replace that bridge, to actually widen it to accommodate. Um, pedestrians and cycling probably be some railings and such that would be put in there um, rather than the use of that catwalk but in the meantime this is the next best option yeah. for us to make it so we're thing. starting it and somebody else will finish it eventually and, and enhance it that's maybe. the plan yeah depends yeah. on how long you're gonna be here I was gonna say, you'll be around <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It's Killing me day by day. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add, um, Mr. Peters, and we have been working, um, we've been involved because the city is extending the Tinker Creek Greenway from there, mm -hmm. from the existing Tinker Creek all the way to um, up north of um, at where the uh, housing project. They mm -hmm. are trying to kind Go of do that <laughs> extension. Yeah. Yes, sir. It will eventually okay. end up all the way at Reed Mountain, Reed Mountain. Uh, Mountain. Preserve. Mm -hmm. It'll go through their business park, Blue Hills Business Park, um, um, 
through some acquired easements and then eventually end up at, at Reed Mountain Preserve. So awesome. it will be another great leg of the connection of the Greenway system. Yeah. Cool. Great. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I tell you what, all those greenways have been a blessing to mm -hmm. this valley. They've been great, I think. Um, so, any other questions or comments? All right. If not, we have uh, before us a resolution that would approve uh, the um, licensing agreement with Norfolk Southern. I make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. All right. We have a motion by Vice Mayor McCarty, second by Council Member Mullins. Council Member Lyles? Yes. Council Member Mullins? Yes. Council Member Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Yeah, once again, great work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great work. Thank you for the funding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing all the Absolutely. behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, good point. Thank, thank you for all the hard work. A lot, a lot of work goes into that. <coughs> Um, the last thing, I just have a couple of quick updates. Um, we continue to um, work towards uh, uh, the hotel project, so I know that's on a lot of folks' minds. Uh, we are in weekly conversations with the developer. Uh, we have received our initial um, proposed site plan for the for the project, so I met with planning and zoning staff, uh, um, and we're making those comments, initial com comments back. We're trying to be proactive to work along with them uh, along the way, because they are remote and, and located in another state. Um, before they submit their formal site plans uh, to the county and, and to the town for, for our f official review. So things are m moving along. The same re goes with the Gish Mill project. It's been a while uh, since we've taken formal action, um, but there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Um, there was, um, we actually received the contract uh, offer from DHR for our initial grant for $250,000 of stabilization. Um, for the project and so uh, we'll be coming to council in a future council meeting probably in October I believe um, to authorize that agreement and, and that'll be the first piece of funding actually um, to be mm -hmm. spent on the projects but a lot of work's been going on over the summer of the design elements so that when the funding arrived we can actually get hit the street and, and get moving so you'll see some activity over there the sign was erected a couple of weeks ago um, is a requirement of the IRF grant from DHCD so just to acknowledge all the partners and all where all the funding sources are coming from so it's coming uh, for those uh, um, maybe curious on, on where we are on these two projects they are in production yeah um, the other piece I just wanted to update council on I know uh, Roanoke City has taken some formal action publicly on the use of their ARPA funds uh, Roanoke County continues to meet and I believe that's what they're actually meeting on tonight um, in a work session is use of ARPA funds um, so staff we've been working on it um, uh, pretty consistently on putting um, budgets and cost estimates together um, we have uh, initiated our first uh, purchase at your direction was to initiate some stormwater improvements for a number of our business owners in the downtown area. Um, this is uh, 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 some stormwater improvements that are necessary between Maple and Blair. Um, and so we have issued a contract uh, to move forward with that. So there'll be some uh, construction going on. I think they were just waiting on equipment to arrive, materials, and they'll get moving on that fairly soon. Um, but we do anticipate, um, you know, there's some, some some pieces to fall in place over the next uh, couple of weeks with some conversations going on and some uh, other funding sources that may materialize so we are uh, planning um, to to have some work sessions with council to give you some opportunity to um, you know to vet some of the ideas that we've come up with bring your own ideas and then we'll we'll settle on a final outcome um, some of this is intentional in the in the in the piece of being patient to see what others are doing this is uh, new territory for us all and so we all want to make sure we're doing it correctly and so we sometimes um, particularly with CARES Act we, we kind of rushed out of the gate to get things done and then with the the guidance and the, uh, the flexibility of the project um, of the funding kind of materialized over time and you know if we would have been a little more patient maybe we we could have done some some slightly different things so there is something to be said for taking it slow and steady in this case to see what guidance comes out uh, what redirections may take and then learn from others uh, as all these other communities are announcing some of their projects you know, we're, we're exchanging text messages and and emails quite often did you see what so-and-so is doing did you see what so-and-so is doing so we're really working a lot behind the scenes and we'll bring you together some good recommendations for your uh, your direction and your guidance on where you would like to spend um, those valuable grant dollars so 
uh, more to come, uh, but we, our first project is uh, off and running, so to speak, with the stormwater improvements. Great. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. <coughs> Hey, um, just real quick while you're doing updates and stuff, you know, you everybody here knows that I am just fascinated with traffic lights. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is fixed. Love them, I know. Um, but just curious if, uh, you, what's the update on 3rd Street? I know we've, sure. we've addressed it and just, it, was there a timeline or yeah. anything that? So we've made some notes on, on social media to try to uh, make the citizens aware or inform them of our, our status and our progress. So, so the internal control mechanisms of that, um, pr um, traffic signal uh, just went on the fritz they literally melted in the cabinet <laughs> and so um, we weren't able to actually go in and reprogram the system so it's cycling through um, so we worked with our attorney worked with you know kind of worked through the procurement piece um, and getting bids estimates for the for the materials to re replace it very similar to what we did at Clearview um, to get that traffic signal updated so we have signed the contract those last Friday okay. um, so we're just again as we're waiting on equipment and if our uh, materials and if you ordered anything construction related um, yourself you know how long uh, and backlog some of the materials are so we we they are in order um, and as soon as they come in it's about a two-day maybe a three-day turnaround like Clearview um, and they'll come in and put that new infrastructure in so this is a rebuild of the system this is uh, the control units this is the the wiring this is the actual physical lights themselves so the only thing that's not changing really is the arms themselves that hold hold all the equipment but everything else is changing i believe it's a sixty one thousand mm -hmm. dollar um, um re replacement now again we have been talking about this as part of our cip to replace all 11 traffic signals in the town because of the aging infrastructure so we knew this was coming um this one just you know kind of happened before we were ready but we we were moving towards getting estimates and and planning to replace all these traffic signals in upcoming cip so we just nudged this one ahead a little bit because of necessity um, but hopefully within the next you know month or six weeks um you know we'll have some some equipment on ground and we'll we'll get that one replaced and eventually we'll have all these traffic signals replaced there'll be new infrastructure and they'll be able to talk to one another so we can have some sequencing um, for the traffic signals and as the modern traffic signals do around in other parts of the of Roanoke Valley they'll be able to talk and, and be more programmable and, and work in sequence um, which will help all of our traffic uh, cool. cool thanks for the update thanks for asking yeah yeah good question okay uh, any other questions for Pete no? okay all right, with that, we'll move on to uh, the council uh, comments for this afternoon. Uh, uh, council Member Lyle, do you have anything further this afternoon? Um, no, just one thing um, that we haven't met since then, but just wanted to uh, take my hat off and don't have one on, but I'd take it off to Nathan and um, Anita and the planning staff for the Penny for Your Thoughts that was held at the Charles Hill Center. Um, very interactive i think everyone there really enjoyed the, the visuals of um of participating and and actually seeing um what the changes look like it's easy to to write it all down but if you're like a visual person like me and like nathan is um it was really educational um for that to go through that whole little work session there so um if if you missed it you missed a, a pretty new uh informative way of getting the information out that, that Nathan and Anita came up with. Great. Cool. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good reports about it. it really good. Yeah, it was. It was really, really good. Like I said, it, it was a lot of hands-on things there, and uh, they put a lot of work into it and a lot of um, technology into it as well. I mean, if you, if you <coughs> even, like, it was at the Charles Hill Center, so, uh, but we had some, um, uh, some 3d maps that uh that they came up with that you can actually twist the paper and see the streets of downtown and, and what uh and then you know what the signage the new signage uh ordinance would look like it was just really um educational like i said so in a different way cool very good good thank job anita thank you for that sir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, you have anything further this evening? Um, yes, I, I too wanted to thank you guys for everything that you did. I was able to come over and pick up my packet, but I had a bunch of stuff going on, so I had to not stay very long. But my girlfriend was there, and she immediately texted me and said that was a really cool meeting. So um, 
and she'll tell lots of people of what's going on, so I appreciate that as well. And I again want to thank the mayor and the town manager for the mayor's updates. They are awesome. I love them. I love to read everything that's going on. It's a great way to let everybody know what's going on. Uh, I wanted to congratulate Chastity on being selected to serve as the, on the, as the advisor for leadership in the Runnick Valley. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good um, accomplishment. And yes. So um, I hate that she's not here tonight, but if y'all will pass that on, I would like for her to know that. Um, and it's good to see that we have lots of uh, folks being hired in different departments. So that's always good, especially in today's world, sure. because uh, everybody has seems to have vacancies and it's very hard to get people to work. So evidently these folks know a good place when they see it. So I'm glad that we have, we're filling those. Um, and uh, the last thing is, I probably should have seen this prior to, but uh, the night that we had the mingle takeover by the town, I noticed the neat fencing that is down there because when I was the chamber president and we did the mingle at the market, uh, that was not an easy task to get all those cement blocks out there and put that fencing up. So when I saw that <laughs> down there, I said, oh my gosh. And I knew that we'd probably talked about it, but I hadn't realized, I hadn't gone down there and actually seen it. It looks amazing. Yep. And it does make the events that go on down there much easier mm -hmm. to set up for and take in, you know, take down. And that right there, you know, it's hard to get volunteers to, to help sometimes, but to clean up and to set up are the worst two things, so that helped a lot. So thank you, it looks great. And that's yeah. all. <coughs> thank you. Uh, Council Member Mall, is there anything further to see? Um, I also wanted to say the ordinance meeting was very good. Um, I, I'm, I, was, I was hoping for more citizen participation just because, you know, to know what's going on, but when you, I guess when you hear ordinance, you're like, yeah, but okay. it was so interesting. Uh, it kept everybody's attention. You got to do hands-on if you wanted. If not, you could just kind of hang back and just visually know what's going on. I, I thought it was really good. Nathan worked hard on that. I appreciate you too, Anita. And um, looking forward to Tractor Supply opening. I noticed the parking space is marked for veterans and military personnel. I like that a lot right up front. Um, I think that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Councilmember Sobal. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, so that I missed it. Of course, I was in Florida uh, visiting my grandson, but um, but we're going to get a briefing, yeah. I guess, here in a couple of weeks. Um, I meant to follow up on this, and I went on vacation, but uh, it's kind of third hand. But there was an org, there was a some kind of two day meeting at the War Memorial, and I I, I think it dealt with electrical companies, but I'm going to follow back up on it anyway. Um, so during the course of those two day meetings, some of the people had never been to Benton before. And they had great conversations with Chastity and I guess um, Dana and some people about Benton. So it was over with on a Thursday and they got a group together and came back on Saturday and hung out in Benton for about three hours, went to Rosie's. Uh, actually, I think one of them won some money. They went by the brewery and ended up eating at Joe's Good Pies. And um, so, as y'all know, I love the outdoors, and it's a group of the outdoors people. So anyway, I thought that was great with the staff promoting that. And hats off to Chastity. I, I, like you, uh, Council Member McCarty, she's not here. But anyway, if you pass it on to her and say, you know, well, I mean, it's, you know, it, th those are things, in my opinion, kind of like the, the the presentations that you gave you know you, you, do you have to do that stuff you know you could let the meetings run and stand around and promote the town as an employee and all that you know people don't have to do that kind of stuff and then you know but they take it upon themselves to uh, to do that and i mean to me that's that's the worth of, of a great employee or employees to do that and um and I do want to take my hat off. I know Paul left, but, you know, I said to Council Member Mullins, you know, it'd been, it would have been easy for him not to have engaged that juvenile and gone on about his way mm -hmm. and then to take it and step it up to the next level. I mean, once again, that's, you know, that's what, that's what God tells us to do when we see those kind of things. So I do take my hat off for that. And it was great news the other day about the email about Mountain View Road. I'll put that plug in there. So we'll kind of see, <laughs> we'll kind of see how that shakes out. So yeah. uh, yes, sir. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, sir. I appreciate all those comments uh, that uh, they they just point out what a, a great team we have uh, here at the town of Vinton that uh, all these folks uh, work really hard. Uh, I agree with you about the uh, the report. Uh, Pete allows me to call it the mayor's report, but as you know, staff puts that together. I think he uh, accumulates information from the entire staff, but you're right. It's a great report. You can tell what's going on uh, in town, so I, I certainly agree with that. You know, one thing I I, I, I do regret that the Third Street traffic light has a issue, but <laughs> it proves the legitimacy of it being a part of our capital improvement program. Yes, I mean, that was sure. money uh, that was going to be uh, uh, well spent. So. Uh, I guess that's a kind of a backhanded compliment there, but we we, we know we uh, need to spend money in those areas, and we're planning to do that one. Just happened to jump out early. Um, just a couple of things I might mention that uh, the administration and I uh, attended a couple uh, meetings to uh, represent the town, and I'm probably leaving some folks out. The state of the city. Did you get to go? Uh, I did not. No. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. But anyhow, we did attend the State of the City address as on August 19th, and we also uh, attended the Roanoke Regional Partnership uh, Investor Update. That was on August 25th, and uh, of course we continued to meet uh, regularly. And I, you know, I just. Uh, I'm just amazed by all the work that goes on, and it's it's hard to to bring it out when we just have a few quick resolutions, but there's just a lot of work involved uh, behind those. Uh, and I, I think our our folks work really well as a team. Uh, the other thing I would uh, mention too, we also uh, from the mayor's office issue a, uh, issued a proclamation uh, in recognition of 30. First anniversary of uh, American uh, with Disability Act and uh, their efforts uh, uh, to get folks out to vote, and uh, that uh, week will be September 13th through 20th. And that's something we do uh, every year. Um, just want to just briefly uh, thank staff once again for all the awesome work that goes on we you know we we are really blessed with a great staff we're blessed to live in a great town uh, someone mentioned that they attended the uh, Lee Avenue party I think you uh, my wife and I were down there and I, you know do you want to talk about all-american uh, town and all-american evening it was a great evening uh, you could go to the Lee Avenue uh, party uh, if you walked a couple of blocks it was uh, well, Twin Creeks had an outside band, so we had more music down there. Mm -hmm. Of course, across the street was a very busy place, Big Billy's uh, Pizza. My wife and I ended up walking over to Joe Good Pies, and I'm thinking, man, what a cool place. Right, you know? absolutely. You can walk around and see all kinds of music. Live music, absolutely. Yeah, live music and food and entertainment. So We're coming alive. Uh -huh. We're coming to live. No doubt about All it. That. It, was, it was a lively evening, that's for sure. But just really, uh, really a nice evening to be here in the town of Vinton, as most evenings are, as a matter of fact. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I forgot one thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lyles, at your expense, at the ribbon cutting at, at the Bank of Bonathot, we got a picture made. <laughs> Side to oh, right. <laughs> like that came up in conversation, and I'm like, let's take a picture. <laughs> we enjoyed our ice cream. We enjoyed it. Right. I didn't eat any of it because I, I was good, working. As good friends of mine, but I didn't eat it. As good friends of mine, I am with you. I figured it would like something happen to me, so I didn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, like right. a very good time. Yeah, <laughs> we enjoy those things, don't we? Yeah, That's for sure. Um, Yes, did, Pete, please. did you want to, I received, I guess, this email today, Renwick County 200 plan at the um, community open house meeting for Bontac Benton? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I think I, I, we left that off the That's okay. Meeting. That's Thursday, September the 30th from 4 to 8 at the Charles Hill uh, Community Center. Yes, and that is the Vernon County's comprehensive plan update. So this is a community oh. meeting to come and, and have an open house and preview uh, the mm -hmm. different items of their comp plan update. So it's kind of a, again, it's kind of open house, a drop-in event from 4 to 8 at the community center next mm -hmm. Thursday mm -hmm. at the Charles R. Hill Community Center. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, hey, thank, you're, you. thank you, because you just said that the, ma the mayor's report is what they compile for you. Well, 
This is Sabrina's page. You look like I know everything that's going on. <laughs> that's a sign of a good staff. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Jeremy, thank you, man. I know you participate in all this stuff, so we're, we're uh, very appreciative. Still a rock star. Appeared on TV down there with the Martinsville, Henry County deal, speaking. I mean, yeah. 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 So, so you'll be giving out autographs later? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else to uh, come before council this evening? If not, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor signify by saying aye. Wow. And going Go home. home. Thank you, folks. God bless.